All right, here we go. So I got a little bit of time. I think I can do this multi-part problem. So this is a multi-part problem, guys and gals. Uh, it has four parts, as it says. This first part is asking us to deal with an inequality. The next part, uh, it's asking about an ordered pair we got from it. Third part, we got a system of inequalities. And the fourth part, it's asking about something out of them. Okay, so inequalities, right? What makes an inequality different from an equation? Well, the symbol. There's no equal sign in inequality. There's an inequality symbol. So part of the things that part, one of the things you need to know how to do when you're reading this is how to actually read this, right? This is saying y is greater than or equal to 2x minus 1. That's what that symbol means, greater than or equal to. One thing I always use to remember that is think of, I don't know if you guys ever play Pac-Man. I'm totally showing my age. Um, if you like video games, check out on Netflix. There's a series called High Score. It's really, really cool. The first episode talks about video games in the 80s, and you discover how Pac-Man became a thing. It's really, really cool. Anyway, think of Pac-Man, all right? Pac-Man goes around eating all the cookies. He always goes towards what's bigger, right? So I always think of the symbol. And when I was a kid, I learned this. And I, st I still think of this as an adult. But it tells me what's larger. It's eating what's larger. Right? So y is greater than. If it was this way, right, let's think of it, it was like that, that would be saying y is less than. So that's how I remember it, honestly. Pac-Man. Thank you, 80s. All right. So consider this an equality. Y is greater than or equal to 2x minus 1. Graph the solution set of the inequality on the coordinate plane. So it's asking us to graph this. And then this, you're doing this digitally, right? I'm going to show you graphically uh, how to do it on paper because I think this is easier for me to show you. So anyway, so there's two choices of lines. That's the first thing. There's a solid line and a dotted line. So when it's or equal to, so greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, we're going to be dealing with a solid line, okay? Because that means it's inclusive, all right? The line itself is part of the solution, okay? If it was just greater than, so there's no or equal to, just greater than or less than, then we're dealing with a dotted line because that's considered to be non-inclusive. We're not including the line as part of our solution. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and graph this. Now they did us a nice favor. They put it in uh, slope-intercept form, so they made it a lot easier to graph. Remember, slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. B being the y-intercept. Right. My handwriting is not looking great today. Hold on. Let's try that again. Y-intercept. And then m is the rate of change or slope. Okay, so negative one is our y-intercept. We're going to plot that. Negative one goes right here. Rate of change is two. So remember, rate of change is uh, change in y over change in x. So it's two over one. It's positive. So we're going to go up from left to right. We're going to go up two over one, up two over one. And when you do this graphically, you just have to have, I believe, two points. I can't remember if it's two or three. I got to double check that. But when I'm doing this on paper, I always like to do as many as I can. But uh, for those of you, my students, who are doing a lot of delta math, and they actually mimic a lot of it in delta math the way it's graphically done, which is nice. So keep in mind, this is a or equal to. So is this going to be a solid or dot? It's going to be a solid line. So we're going to connect these to a solid line. So there we go. I should have brought my ruler, but I forgot. That's OK. We're not done, though, because when you graph an inequality, you have to shade one of the sides, OK? We don't know which side to shade, so we're going to use what's called a test point. And thankfully, this is not going through the origin. The origin makes it really easy. I'm going to label this TP. So TP stands for test point. And we're going to plug this test point in to see if we get a true or false reading. If it's true, that means we're shading this side because that's the side it's on. If it's false, we know we're shading the other side. So we're going to go ahead and take the coordinates of the test point, which is 0, 0. We're going to plug it into that inequality. So let's start with the inequality. Y is greater than or equal to 2x minus 1. OK. Uh, we're going to plug in our zeros. So oops, wrong one. 0 is greater than or equal to 2 times 0 minus 1. Follow our order of operations here. 2 times 0 is 0. And 0 take 1 is negative 1. So 0 is greater than or equal to negative 1. That is a true statement. right? So because that's true, that means this is part of the solution. So here we go. That means this is, this is where you graph it. All right? And any one of these points will give you a true reading. If you put anything on this side, um, yeah, it'd be false. If this line was going through the origin, we would just have to use another point. Another, like one of the good points to use is like one zero or zero one or zero. I mean, I don't really like using zero and negative one because students make mistakes sometimes with the negative sign. One one's not a, not a terrible one to use. So, but zero zero is definitely the easiest one to use. Okay, so that's the first part. Let's check out. Let me zoom in a little bit here. Let's check out the second part. Write an ordered pair 
that is a solution of the inequality from part A. Show or explain how you got your answer. So that means if it's a solution, it's, it's, a, it's a point that is either on the line, because remember it's inclusive, or anywhere here. So what you could do, you could actually use your test point. You could say, okay, well, I'm going to use 0, 0. I'm going to say, okay, well, you know what? 0, 0. That's the solution. And you could show the work. I'll do it again. Why not? And that could show how you know it's true. So y is greater than or equal to 2x minus 1. Right? So y is greater than or equal to 2x minus 1. You could simply say, I plugged this point in, and I got, the, and I got a true reading. So 0 is greater than or equal to 2 times 0 minus 1. 2 times 0 is 0. 0 take away negative 1. Right? And you could simply write out, I plugged in this point. It's a true statement. Boom, there you go. There's parts one and two. Parts one and two of this problem are not terrible. They're not too bad. Let's take a look at part C. All right. So consider this system of inequalities. So a system means there's two of them, right? So let's zoom in a little more. So we have x plus y is greater than negative two, and x minus y is less than four. Now you notice they're, they were not so nice this time. They did not put these in slope-intercept form for us. Oh, well. Graph the solution set. So they want us to graph the solution of this system of inequalities. OK. Well, we need to graph these. We can't graph these the way they are. We need to convert these into slope-intercept form. I mean, you could graph them by using intercepts, but we're not going to do that. We're going to do some simple math here. So let's rewrite this here. So x plus y is greater than negative 2. Let's get y by itself. We're going to subtract x from both sides. And we have y is greater than negative x minus 2. And we're going to graph that. Now this one we're going to put over here. So x minus y. Actually, I should do this in red. Let's do this one in red, actually. x minus y is less than 4. Again, we want to get x by itself, y by itself. So we're going to subtract x from both sides. So we have negative y is less than negative x plus 4. Oop, I'm off camera. Sorry, hold on. There we go. And we still need to get y to be, well, we need negative y to be positive y. So we're going to divide by negative 1. Okay. Now be careful here. You're dividing both sides or multiplying both sides of an inequality by a negative number, which means this symbol is going to change direction. So it's going to become y is greater than now. Okay. And that becomes x, and that becomes negative 4. There we go. We just graph those. All right. And we're going to see what they have in common. Like I said before, you could plug in 0 for x and find y and plug in intercept and do all that. It takes way longer, and as long as you know your algebra, you should be good with this. Um, and even if you don't know your algebra, you can kind of probably fake it as long as you get a variable by itself, you know, figure it out. So anyway, let's try this out. We'll, put, we'll keep that in blue, actually, so it's visually a little easier to follow. So our y-intercept is negative 2. Okay. Our rate of change is negative 1, so we're going down 1, right 1. I'm going to put as many points as I can. I really should have grabbed a ruler. I might pause and go grab a ruler. Let's see. Then we're going to go up and to the left. Okay. Now, is this a solid or dotted line? It's going to be a dotted line. I'm going to write that as a reminder again. So remember, these are going to be solid, and then these are going to be dotted. So neither one of these is going to be solid. Neither one of them are inclusive. So these are both going to be dotted lines. Uh, so I'm going to start doing these dotted. Okay. And I'm going to do the test point to start. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, do, we'll, we'll do the test point. So I'm going to plug in um, 0 for x and y and see if, see if that... Uh, no, let's not do that yet. Let's actually wait till we graph both of them. We'll do the test point. All right, so let's go ahead and graph this one. So the y-intercept is negative 4, which is down here. The rate of change is 1, so we're going up 1 over 1. So we're doing this. So these are actually perpendicular because they have they have rates of changes that rates of change that are that are uh, opposite sign reciprocals or opposite additive inverses. If that doesn't sound confusing enough, here we go. All right. Now the reason I didn't want to do the test point yet is I want to make sure that neither one goes to the origin, which neither one does. So we're going to use this as our test point. Okay, we'll use that for both of them, TP. We'll see what happens here. So I'm going to rewrite that. So y is greater than negative x minus 2. Let's plug in 0 for x and y. That's their test point. Okay, so 0 is greater than negative 0 minus 2. Negative 0 is 0. 
Zero take away two is negative two. So zero is greater than negative two. That is true. So this was our blue line. I should have kept this in blue. So blue line is going towards this test point. So blue line is shading this way. But I don't want to shade too large because when you, when you graph this on the computer, you're only going to have one shaded area. It's a little confusing. I'll put this one in red. I should put that one in blue. There, blue. And this is going to be our red one. So we have y is greater than y is greater than x minus four. Hey Warley. And let's let's go ahead and plug in zero for x and y. So zero is greater than zero minus four. Zero is greater than negative four. Is zero greater than negative four? It sure is. It's a true statement. So that means <clears throat> that means the red line is going towards a test point as well. Okay. So what that means is we're looking for the area they both have in common. Where do they both shade? Well, you can see it right here, because look. So blue, red is here, right? Blue is going to be here. You can see where they both shade. It's right here. So our solution area is this. It's going to be that part there. So it's starting here at the intersection going out. Now, it does not include the lines, because notice they're both non-inclusive. It's just this space here, basically inf infinitely upwards. And that's part of the solution. That's it. So when you were to graph this online, it's going to give you the choice to graph the lines, and you pick which one is a shade, and it'll be the common area. Okay. This this requires you to know a few things. One, how to graph a linear equal well linear inequality, right? Uh, you like I said, you could use the intercept method, but I think you're it's much better off using this. Uh, you need to know how to graph an inequality in terms of solid versus dotted lines, and you know how to you need to know how to identify which area to shade as well. Okay. The last part, I think, is just asking you for a point that is a solution for both. Write an ordered pair that is a solution for both inequality from part A. Oh, hold on. This is different. So we have to read these carefully. Write an ordered pair that is a solution from both the inequality from part A and the system of inequality part C. So read this very carefully, okay? They want to know what, it, what could work for both our first inequality and the system. So that's interesting. I read that really quickly in the beginning. I almost made a mistake. So what's going to be here and here? So let's look. Um, all right, so we can see the common area. We kind of, I wish I could kind of want to place them. I guess I can. Yeah, there we go. So what do they have in common? Well, let's look at the shaded areas. I think this spot right here. Oh, yeah. 1, 3. 1, 3. Yeah, they're both on there. So we're going to say 1, 3. Basically, anything here up to there. So anything in this general area, we're going to go with a 1 comma 3, right? We're going to say 1 comma 3 works. And let's prove that. Let's show that. So what we're going to do is we're going to write all three inequalities and plug 1, 3 in and, see, and show that it works. So the first one, which is y is greater than 2x minus 1, or greater than or equal to x or equal to. So y is greater than or equal to 2x minus 1, right? memory is going, guys. And then the other inequalities, we'll, we'll write down all three. x plus y is greater than negative 2. x plus y is greater than negative 2. And then the last one is x minus y is less than 4. x minus y is less than... I totally just screwed that up. <laughs> x minus y. When I'm saying numbers and I'm writing it, I always do that. There we go. So I should never try to multitask when I'm doing math. X minus Y. Okay, there we go. Okay. So let's plug in 1, 3 and see if we get a true statement. We should get a true statement for all of these, unless I made a mistake, which is entirely possible. So 3 is greater than or equal to 2 times 1 minus 1. We're just plugging these numbers in here, guys. And then we're going to get 3 is greater than or equal to 2 minus 1. 3 is greater than or equal to 1. That's true. So, so far, so good. Let's plug in 1 and 3. So 1 is our X. Let's label that X and Y. So 1 plus 3 is greater than negative 2. 4 is greater than negative 2. Most definitely. That's definitely true. Okay, looking good. x minus y is less than 4. So 1 minus 3 is less than 4. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Negative 2 is less than 4. Sure is. Sweet. That would prove it. So these, these what do they call them now? Const constructed responses. They used to call them open responses, but they changed the word because the phrase, who knows why. They get progressively more challenging. So as you get deeper into the problem, uh, it becomes more challenging. This is a long explanation. I apologize for the wordiness of it, but I think it's important to see how we do this. Okay, so let's do a quick review. Part one, we graph a linear inequality. 
Okay. Part two, you identify one of the ordered pairs as part of your solution. Those two parts, all of us should be able to get. And if you get the first two parts of a constructed response, more than likely you're going to do just fine. The vast majority of people that can get half the points on these on these multi-part problems typically do very, very well. So if you can get two out of four, you're in a really good position. You don't have to get four out of four. You want to get four out of four, but you don't have to, right? The system of inequalities problem, this just requires us to be able to graph two inequalities, linear inequalities on the same graph. That's all it's asking you to do. So if you can do the same thing for number, if you could do part A, you should be able to do part B. You're just doing the same thing twice on the same grid, essentially, okay? And then part D, I could see people making a mistake on that if they don't read it carefully, like I did. I made the mistake when I first read it. So you have to read this very, very carefully. Originally, I thought it was just going to ask us to do the same thing for part B. I thought it was just going to ask us to identify a point that was part of the solution. But no, it wanted to point that was part of solutions for both the system and the previous part. So as long as you read this carefully, you should be good. All right, thanks for following, guys. I will, uh, I'm going to run out of time, so I won't be able to make another one today, but I'll continue tomorrow. See you all later.